This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Where are you? God wants to know, where are you? Have you located yourself in the scheme and in the overall plan of God in areas of your life that he wants you to personally take responsibility so that you can evolve and you can develop in, so that you can lovingly express and you can live in truth, dealing truly, living truly, speaking truly, having a life that eliminates truth, amen? We look in the mirror daily and ask ourselves questions. Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Will I realize my dreams? We know we're not alone in our quest for answers. And it's time to come together and remember who we are. Rare, valuable, powerful, capable, more than enough. No more settling for second best. Join us for Worth 2020. Register now at taffydollar.org. This is your world, so let's vibe. start with a few questions and ask you, how can you or how can I, speaking to myself, facilitate my own growth as an individual? How can you in your personal life facilitate growth, not apart from yourself, but within yourself as an individual? Facilitation of the growth. How can you pursue your own personal growth so that you can make a mark, not just in the world, but how about making a mark in your own life? Amen. How about doing it for ourselves so that we know that we're doing what God has called us to do? And then as a result, how many you know publicly, it'll be expressed in different areas of our life and people will begin to see it. And so I wanna challenge us this morning to begin to look internally and to reflect within and to just hold the mirror up to ourselves so that we can begin to look at what it's going to take for us to cross those things that we believe are goals and, and desires and visions that God has for us. And God wants those things to be materialized and realized in your life. He wants them to become a reality. But there are things that on a practical basis and things that we can do to cooperate with the Spirit of God and part of what we understand is that we must begin to grow and take responsibility for our own growth in these areas of our life so that we can live in the truth of what God's Word says it is. Amen? Amen. So you have to ask yourself, how committed are you? What is it that you want? Do you even know what is going to be required? And are you willing to do that which is required? And so we have to identify where we are and really locate ourselves. I had to locate myself long time ago and recognize that there were a lot of fears in my life that were going to prevent me from being fully present in situations of my life. And I had to locate it and understand that this is where I had to yield my weakness over to God and allow him to give me the strength so that I could do what it is that his word says that I'd be able to do. And if we're not careful, we'll begin to protect and we'll begin to surround ourselves and we'll allow these wrong beliefs and wrong thinkings about things to begin to define and identify with who we are versus what the word of God says. And so there are areas that I have made up in my mind that I'm going to continue to commit to, continue to resist the spirit of fear, and continue to pursue God's plan, and continue to illuminate my mind so that 
personally and spiritually I can evolve. I think life is about evolving. I don't think life is about staying the same. I want to grow with God. I want to evolve with God. I want all that God has for me. I want to see what God has for me. I want to pursue what God has for me. Whatever I need to do in order for God to do what he needs to do, I'm going to do it. Bless God. My mind needs to change. If my mind ain't right, how many of you know sometimes your mind just ain't right? <laughs> Some of our mind, I know my mind wasn't right. And I had to really get a hold of what God's Word said concerning His plan. You know, the Bible says in Romans 12, verse 1, to, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So I didn't know what that meant. I didn't know what that meant. I just knew that, you know, there were things that were causing me to be cautious about submitting to God and, and trusting God and, and beginning to, to really trust God with everything. And so, through the Word of God and through time, I believe that it's important for us to be whole in areas of our life and whole in every area of your life. There's a wholeness that you must be in pursuit of before you try to latch up with somebody else and you give your half and they got their half and then y'all trying to make a whole. But no, God wants each of you to be whole. Yeah. Somebody was telling me the other day, they said, you know, this person, I said, well, they just don't seem happy. You know, what's going on? They just need a man. No, if you don't... <laughs> If you don't like you what, without the man, honey, I doubt very seriously you're not going to like you with the man. <laughs> All right. So this represents how my heart was full of a lot of fear early on in my Christian life. Just really, really, really had to identify and understand areas where I was weak so I could begin to look to God's Word to give me the strength to obey Him and to do what He was telling me to do. And so sometimes in our life it takes that. You've got to locate where you are. Just like Adam and Eve were asked by God, where are you? I asked you this morning, where are you? God wants to know, where are you? Have you located yourself in the scheme and in the overall plan of God in areas of your life that He wants you to personally take responsibility so that you can evolve and you can develop in, so that you can lovingly express and you can live in truth, dealing truly, living truly, speaking truly, having a life that eliminates truth. Amen? So, um, we're talking about how we can begin to see ourselves separately, uniquely in the plan and in the purpose of God. Every part having its purpose, every part functioning independently according to the design of God, which is overall encompassing the unit and the institution and the corporate functioning of the body of Christ. How many of you know the body has who knows how many parts in a physical human body, but you know each part is very important, and it has to function at its highest potential in order for the overall body to experience the, the, the depth of expression and the, the presence that it is meant to have in the body of Christ. And so it is important that we understand that we are a living sacrifice. Somebody say, I'm a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Say that with me. Holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. But it begins by us becoming secure in the assignment and in the part that God has for us. I mean, you know, the knee can't fight with the foot and the foot can't fight with the knee. They're both very important, right? 
there's a security that each part should have in order for the leg to begin to provide the motion that is needed to uh, happen in order to go from one place to the next. And so there's security in God. And once each part of the body becomes whole, each part of the body becomes secure, each part of the body understands the significance that it is to play, then things will begin to happen in this world in which we live. But if the body is broken, the leg is broken, the knee is broken, the foot is broken, then there's an impairment and less likely to reach the design destination where God has intended. So when we talk about biblical equality, we're not talking about sameness. We're talking about identifying that we are in Christ. And if any man or any woman be in Christ, we're new creatures, a new species, a new uh, species of being. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So we're in the body. Every part is in the body. And it is designed to function to its fullest potential. And so when we understand this, we can understand some things even as it relates to uh, things that we have to realize where the things of God are concerned. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with more from Taffy Dollar. This is an awesome experience. We are a team. It's yeah. amazing. You've not been called to be ordinary, but extraordinary. Ladies, are you ready to find your worth? Join us at the 2020 Worth Radical Women's Conference, March 19th through the 21st at World Changers Church International and learn just how valuable you are. Once you find out your worth, you will stop giving out discounts. Join Taffy Dollar, Creflo Dollar, Sarah Jakes Roberts, Dee Dee Freeman, and special musical guests Todd Delaney, Miranda Curtis, and Demita Chandler. Mark my words, this is going to be epic. Join us for three life-changing days at the 2020 Radical Women's Conference, March 19th through the 21st. Reserve your seat today at taffydollar.org or text RADICAL to 51555. Now, let's Realize join Taffy Dollar for more of today's concerned. message. Now, I want to shift a little bit and talk about the loss of shattered dreams, the loss of shattered dreams. Um, after I got saved as a young Christian girl, this was back in 83, 84, 85, something like that. There was a lot of things that I had to realize that God needed to heal me from. And part of those things, as I mentioned, was believing right and understanding right so that I could live the most fruitful life. But it took that darkness, that all kinds of things, self-doubt, insecurities, um, inadequacies, inferiorities, all these things, they had to be healed. And so it took the Word of God coming in on the inside of me. So I just want to share a couple of experiences uh, where you can maybe identify even in your life where maybe there are some things that need to be healed and you have to take personal responsibility of growing and evolving and maturing in some areas of your life. Is that okay? Life is a series, as I mentioned, of evolving. And sometimes that involves loss. And loss is an inevitable part, unfortunately. It could be the loss of a loved one, the loss of health, uh, the letting go of a long-held dream. A significant loss can be one of the most difficult times in a person's life. Even sometimes when children are born or diagnosed with different disabilities, sometimes for parents, you see the loss of maybe the ideal that you had envisioned for your child and for your family. Loss comes in the form of a relationship, of a job, of your home, or even a treasured object. Loss could be in the feeling of safety after a trauma. Loss of functioning after an accident or after even a medical 
crisis, loss of sense of security or self-assuredness, self-assurance, loss of freedom or independence, loss of property, material goods. All these things have the potential to come in and cause our lives to be stagnant and to really put us in the position where life can no longer evolve, but to all of a sudden stand still. And so for a few minutes, I want to talk about this because I think so many times in the church, we don't know how to deal with loss. And we don't know how to move on in situations in our life. And sometimes we as a church have to be the ones who have the answers because if we don't know, then how can we expect the world to know? When we have the Word and we have the Holy Spirit and we have a, the, 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 the uh, things on the inside of us that can bring forth comfort in situations. Now, Jesus was acquainted with loss in John 11, verse 35. Jesus lost his friend Lazarus, and even to the point where the Scripture says that Jesus wept. One of the longest Scriptures in the Bible. <laughs> and he was one who was touched with loss and the shattered dream of his personal friend who had died. And so, in Mark's gospel, even before it was time for him to go to the cross, and he had this long price and cost that had to be paid, he identified where his will was and his emotion, where his emotions were, and he said, nevertheless, what? Not my will. But what? Thy will be done. So the scripture says that after he was struggling in the Garden of Gethsemane with his will versus God's will, it says that he prayed and he moved forward. And many times in our life, if we're not careful with loss and with grief, we can't go forward. And we stay stuck in the past of what was, the past tense, instead of knowing how to live in the present tense. So that even as we live in this present tense, that our future tense will be taken care of. How many of you know if you have a loved one who's in Christ, though they were in your past and you have great memories of their past, how many of you know you're going to see them again? They're going to be in your future. And so it's important for us to understand this letting go and uh, dealing with this area because the Apostle Paul, even in Romans 15, verse 24, he talked about how one day he wanted to go to Spain. And it was his greatest dream to go to Spain to carry the gospel there. But you know what? Paul never made it to Spain. He ended up in prison, and then ultimately he lost his life. And you know what? Sometimes that is the story of life. That is the reality of situations sometimes. But we, as believers, have to understand that our hope and our comfort is in Jesus, and our hope and our comfort is in the Word of God. I remember in 1982, I was away in college, and my mom was... Uh, reaching out to me, and I was in North Carolina going to school there, and she told me that she and my dad were going to separate. And so it just really uh, arrested my heart. I felt so sad. And so I decided to come home, come back to Georgia just to be with her and to go through the transition of the divorce. Well, she ended up calling the divorce off, and she just decided to stick in the marriage. Well, as time went on, her health started to fail and a lot of stress to the point where back in 2007, she told me, she said, Taffy, I'm going to file for divorce again. That same year that she filed, she passed and went home to be with the Lord. 
But I, I say all that to say, as I go to this next picture, it's heartbreak just from the grief that is associated many times when we have loss in our life. And this picture is a picture of me and my brothers at my mom's home going. And so this is a very difficult time for me, one that I wasn't prepared for just in looking for things that would eventually take place afterwards. But I knew that I could find hope in the scriptures. I knew I could find comfort in God. I knew that everything that Jesus did on that cross 2,000 years ago, just like he redeemed us from sickness and disease, he has redeemed us from grief and sorrow. Amen. Amen. And we have to renew our minds where this is concerned because sometimes we don't apply the word to these areas of our life and we just, we just want to, which is okay, but at some point you've got to take responsibility for your emotions. You got to take responsibility for these things that you just kind of tuck away and if not, it will deal with you if we don't deal with it. Look over at Isaiah, excuse me, not Isaiah. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. And see, that's the key. In Christ, we have hope. Yes. Someone say, I have hope. I have hope. You have hope for any situation, any loss, anything that has been experienced in Christ, Scripture says we have hope. And hope is in the future. Our hope is in the position where God wants to fulfill our greatest desires, our biggest hopes, our dreams. He just wants to have something that he can work with for us to begin to move forward like Jesus did. How to pray and to understand that in areas of our weakness that thank God for the word that he is strong. Look at verse 14, verse 14. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, the scripture says what? Will God bring with him? God will bring with him. Let's look at one more scripture here in Isaiah 51. Isaiah 51, go back there please. Verse 11 and 12. Verse 11 and 12. Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion. Are you all the redeemed? You've been redeemed, right? Yes. You are redeemed of the Lord. And whatever the redeemed sh say, what is so? So the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come with singing unto Zion and everlasting joy shall be upon their head. They shall obtain gladness and joy and sorrow and mourning, the scripture says, shall flee away. You got to claim that. You got to own it. You got to take responsibility for your redemption. I am the redeemed of the Lord. I am redeemed from loss. I'm redeemed from sickness. I'm redeemed from poverty. I am redeemed of the Lord, and whatever I say is so. You've got to own that. You've got to facilitate that in your life. How I many you know the devil's not going to turn over and just let you just, you know, bring, serve you your victory over him? No, he's going to do everything in his power to cause you to be paralyzed, to stay stagnant. But that's when you have to get on the Word of God and go for, before God and go after everything that belongs to you. And one of the things I realized was the access that I had to God and the fact that I could go to God and that God receives my access. He's given me free access. You know what? I had to use it. We have to use it in our everyday life. We have to use this privilege, this entitlement that we have from God to go to him, to go before him.
to boldly go before the thrones of God to receive mercy, to receive deliverance from grief and from sorrow so we can walk in the victory over situations and circumstances of our life. God has prepared some wonderful things for us that are far better than we could ever imagine. This is a time where God wants to show out through his people and to do something amazing that's never been done. For a love gift of $30 or more, we would like to offer you God's System of Promotion Bundle. This bundle includes God's System of Promotion Single Message by Taffy Dollar and this limited edition stoneware mug set. God begins to do something in your life. He'll begin to get the glory for it and it'll cause people to be drawn unto him. As a bonus, we have included the DVD Supernatural Favor Message by Creflo Dollar. There is an elevation, there is an upgrade, there is an advance for the people of God. Experience God's acceleration on every level of your life. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Available by people like you with a heart for the Lord and a sincere desire to help produce change in someone else's life. Your financial contributions to Creflo Dollar Ministries enable us to broadcast the message of God's grace all over the world. The testimonies that come in from people who watch these messages daily prove that this broadcast truly does change lives. It wouldn't be possible without people like you who faithfully sow financial seeds into this ministry. And for that, we say thank you, and God bless you. When you make financial donations to Creflo Dollar Ministries, those resources are distributed immediately where you requested. If you do not designate your contribution, rest assured it is used for one of our many outreach endeavors. We are eternally grateful for your faithful financial support. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes.